Let me tell you how it all started, how I got excited about cover crop juice. It began in the fall of 2011 when I decided to plant a mustard cover crop in our home garden over the winter. Our garden had been really good to us that summer by producing lots of good food and so it made sense that we should grow a winter cover crop to keep the soil healthy. Now about two months later as I was in the kitchen washing dishes and looking out at the dark green mustard cover crop in my back garden I wondered if I could transfer some of the nutrients from the mustard into a few stunted plants in pots in my house. So I rushed outside, got some mustard, put it in a blender with some water and blended it up. Then I poured the mixture through a colander to catch the pulp and I ended up with this nice green jar of juice that I could experiment with. For the next several weeks I gave two of the house plants the juice and the other two unlucky ones just water. Now the results were dramatic and to show you that here are two charred plants from when I repeated the experiment at work a few years later. I'm sure you can guess which of the plants got the mustard juice, right? So in 2015 I shared this somewhat crazy idea at a conference and I wrote this paper on how juice could be used as a novel strategy that I call sharper cover cropping. Now, my goal over the next few minutes is to try to give you some more details on why and how I think this has the potential to radically improve the sustainability of the high input crops that I work with and increase cover cropping in these systems. Now, to help with that, I'm going to take you inside of a leaf. My electric car, this Nissan Leaf, and I'm going to use this car to explain a few key concepts about cover crops and why I think this idea of juicing cover crops makes sense. So let's start with the basics. If you drive around the Salinas Valley this time of the year, you'll see lots of bare fields. Now the problem with all these bare fields during the winter rainy period from October to about March is that there are often lots of leftover nutrients from this year's crops left in the fields and those can leach down and pollute our groundwater. And we use that for drinking. So these are pretty leaky systems, and in many ways they remind me of the billboard that I saw a few years ago when I was driving along a freeway. It showed a loose diaper on a baby's bottom. Now, I've changed a lot of diapers, and to do it right, you've got to make sure that they're not leaky. We've got a lot of bare furrow bottoms in the Salinas area, and we need to get them covered so that they're not so leaky. And cover crops can really help with that. Now a major reason that cover crops aren't grown very often in these systems is because the residue is difficult to deal with when you're transitioning from a cover crop to the next vegetable. And that's where the juicing idea might help. And here's how I envision that happening. So what I can see happening is that we would grow the cover crop until it produces about half of its potential biomass. That's about when the nitrogen uptake has already peaked anyway. We would then remove the succulent shoots from the field with a forage harvester. And that way the field could easily be prepared for the next vegetable with few residue problems. Now the harvested residue would be run through a screw press to separate out the fiber from the juice. And then both of these valuable products would be stored on the farm and applied back to the soil when it's convenient and most beneficial for the crops. It's kind of like how I'm able to conveniently charge the battery on my electric car from energy that's produced from the solar panels on the roof of my house and then use that energy to get places when I need to. I don't have to just go when the sun's shining. I can go in the nighttime or whenever I need. I often think of cover crops as biological batteries that can capture and then store nitrogen that would otherwise be wasted and also produce energy-rich carbon compounds that can help to keep our soil healthy and productive. It's a lot like when I'm braking or coasting going downhill in my electric car and the excess kinetic energy is being recycled back in to recharge my battery for when I need to push on the accelerator next. It's pretty cool. Okay, so let me now answer a few practical questions about this juicing idea. First, how much juice and fiber can you produce and what's in it? So here's a figure to show you what I think we can expect. 
The mustard starts out with about 80 to 90% moisture and a pretty low carbon to nitrogen ratio because the material is really succulent when we'd harvest it. Now, after it's been macerated and then juiced, about 50 to 60% of the weight is in the juice and the rest of it is in the pressed fiber that now has way less moisture and a carbon to nitrogen ratio that's about twice as high as before juicing. Now that pressed material would be perfect for storing in the silage bag and then using later as compost. Now about half of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that was in the original shoots ends up in the juice. So that's a pretty good amount of nutrient content in that juice. So let me put this into perspective at our research farm in this five acre field. Let's say that we grew mustard here and it produced about 10 tons per acre of fresh shoots. For the five acres, that would be about six and a half thousand gallons of juice. And we could hold that in this 10,000 gallon tank. Now that juice would have about 250 pounds of nitrogen in it from the five acres. We'll come back to that in a minute. Now we need about a 25 foot long 8 foot diameter silage bag to hold the pressed mustard shoots. So as you can see we're not talking about that much space to store the juice or the fiber component. Another question, what's the economic value of the cover crop juice? So our juice has relatively low nutrient concentrations compared with commercial liquid organic fertilizers. But, and this is an important one, ours is produced on farm from nutrients like nitrogen that otherwise would have been wasted. And the juice that we produce might actually be a more cost-effective source of liquid organic nutrients. It's also probably more sustainable too. So let's do a little bit of back of the envelope math. So my good friend Roy pays about $18 per pound of nitrogen for the liquid organic fertilizer that he uses in his strawberries. And at that price, the 250 pounds of nitrogen that we could extract from the juice in this five acres of mustard right next to Roy's strawberries would be worth about four and a half thousand dollars. Can you believe that? But as you might be thinking, we still need to subtract off the cost to grow the cover crop, to harvest it, and then to juice it. Okay, so I estimate that the growing and the harvesting costs, you know, the seed, the planting costs, etc., for the mustard would be about $250 an acre. So that's about $1,250 for the five acres. I estimate that the pressed residue stored in that silage bag actually has a value equivalent to compost. So we should add that value back and we're still left with over four and a half thousand dollars. Now the big unknown question is, what will it cost to juice it? We should also factor in the costs to store the juice and then store that residue before we would be able to use it. Another important thing to think about is what type of machinery would we need to make this all happen? Well, the good news is basically most of this has already been developed by the dairy industry. So what I envision is that an ag service company that normally sells fertilizer to farmers or makes their beds for them, that company would own a mobile cover crop processing unit that could move from farm to farm and leave the grower with two things, a silage bag with pressed residue and a tank full of that beautiful juice. Now the same equipment could also be used to harvest and extract nutrients from cash crops like broccoli that are loaded with nitrogen after harvest. The equipment could also be used to extract nutrient-rich juice from vegetable waste at processing plants. It sounds like a win-win-win strategy to me. Now I admit, when I started dreaming about juicing cover crops, I was a little bit lonely because I couldn't find anything on this in the scientific literature and a few folks actually thought I was a little bit nuts. But then this past year I visited Denmark and I was super excited because the Danes were actually doing research on juicing forage crops to extract the protein for animal food as an alternative to importing soybeans. The protein is called leaf protein concentrate. And I've since found lots and lots of scientific literature from several decades ago on this idea, including several books. Now this all made me think of that beautiful and famous song by John Lennon. You may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one 
Now I know we've still got a lot of work to do on this idea, but I think it's got a lot of hope, and I think it could potentially really improve the sustainability of the systems that I work in. So stay tuned as we continue to work on these issues. Keep dreaming. Take care. I